Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you're about to find out the greatest plane design in Hearts of Iron 4 by Blood Alone. And we are going to test it in a really super special way. Can you see on the right-hand side here? These are all YouTuber names. Toriel, Pravis, Tommy K, 71 Cloak. I approached all of these YouTubers and I asked them the question, what is the design? The one, the meta, the one that is the one true aircraft designed to beat them all. Huh? And then they came back to me. These are the planes that they have chosen. And the only fair way of knowing what is the ultimate aircraft, the one plane to rule them all, is to put them into an active dogfight together. So I told them a few rules. Rule number one is you can only have up to 1941 tech, 1940 tech. Be aware that there was a patch that got released after that that shifted a few of the years. I believe now that cannons are a little bit later than they used to be and some of the engines are a little bit different. So there might be some kind of little small variables here that we won't take into account. But I wanted to put an active cap on what was the best, best plane. Because realistically, you're more likely to make a 1940 plane than you are a 1945 plane, obviously. So for the most part, you could pick any airframe and then you had to cut up, up to a maximum 1940 tech. Okay, let's show off the planes, all right? First of all, the Penguin. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Pinjin? I could be saying it wrong. We have Multifire, Heavy Machine Gun Boy with Armor Boys, as well as a self-sealing fuel tank with an Engine 3, a Heavy Fire. And he's also selected specifically triple engines as well the dummy k the dummy k has gone for a standard design here a standard light airframe improved fighter single engine armor plates with also an extra machine gun next up the torior specifically going for light machine guns and the previous patch going for less weight by adding light machine guns resulted in a higher speed we have a smaller engine surprisingly torio didn't put the biggest engine on maybe that was a mistake armor self-sealing fuel tanks focus on defense and focus on agility slightly lower or lower on the tag the Pravus. now Pravus dm'd me back and forth several times he wanted to make sure he had the best possible plane he's a very numbers guy and he has gone for two smaller cannons and also a single double cannon. So loads of cannons. Be aware, these do make you lose uh, some agility. So this is forfeiting agility for extra air attack. Air attack, extremely heavy, single frame, single engine. Very nice. The Ludi at Historia. Double quad heavy machine guns, a single quad light machine gun, and a focus also on armor as well as a double engine. He did ask to put on the anti-air radar and I don't think at the time he understood that this one doesn't actually benefit you uh, on air superiority. It only benefits you on an interception. So the one he would have really needed would have been the radar, radio navigation 2. Next up, the Discord Pixel. We have times 2 cannons. Very heavy emphasis on armor. Heavy fighter as well, so it's lower on the agility. Quad engines too. We basically got a heavy fighter with quad engines. This is a lot of engines, a lot of thrust, a lot of power. Results in a little bit extra speed, loads of range. Overall, we'll see how it does. Next up is the Dankus, the multiplayer special. We have air attack, literally. Balls to the wall, air attack, air attack, air attack, air attack. Here we go. Losing the agility. One agility. Basically, the turning circle of this is several kilometers, as well as extra cannons for extra turret damage, which results in our air attack, less agility, and quad engines. Boko and one. Another multiplayer special. Don't care about agility. Going for the air attack. Slightly more air defense, though. Armor plates, self sealing fuel tanks. Quad engine, heavy frame fighter. The bitter steel. Once again, very balanced here. Slight hit to agility due to the cannons, air attack, defense, double engine, heavy fire. Kind of a balanced heavy fighter this time. We have the Alex the Rambler here. Heavy fighter boyer with loads of light machine guns, quad engined, extra light defense turrets. Interesting, light defense is the first time we've seen that. Self sealing fuel tanks and armor plates. And the final design, the, probably the one most people are going to be asking about. Everyone's going to be asking about this is the 71 cloak, the Excel spreadsheet master. So what we got here, we've got a balance. This is literally the most, this is like 
the Buddhist monk of balance and chi. Single engine, light airframe, defense, defense, range, surprisingly, cannons, heavy machine guns, light machine guns. To make this a fair test, let me bring up the spreadsheet. You guys love spreadsheets, right? <laughs> well, welcome to the spreadsheet meta. Aha! Be aware, I understand that there might be a few things that I may have missed, and you guys feel free to comment below, and then we can see if we can flush those out, and maybe there'll be another test in future. Who knows? So, the test will be 50,000 IC worth of planes. So, as an example, the Toriel plane is the cheapest plane of all of them. So, 50,000 IC worth of planes equates to 1,515 planes, and it specifically breaks the IC per plane. The Torior is the cheapest. So, the rules. It is fighter versus fighter. It will be France and Germany fighting over the lowlands with no one controlling any of the territory in the lowlands to prevent a air detection advantage. There'll be one level four ground radar covering the entire air zone for each side to give more air detection. So therefore battles are more likely to happen. So therefore we get more results. The amount of planes that are in an air zone can factors in how much air detection you get. And if the air detection is super low, planes never even meet. So therefore, don't get into dogfights, which is useless. The first doctrine from battlefield support is unlocked for both countries. Both sides have infinite fuel. Fuel will never be an issue. Using full air wings, so the first few losses are reinforced and to simulate a more realistic scenario. Results taken after two months on an air superiority mission. So planes introduced to the air zone. Two months, then we record the results. All air wings are using air superiority. No design companies. Planes lost don't count air accidents, only losses from air combat. That's important. No chief of air force or military command for extra bonuses and no spirit of the air force. So, as the first test here. Oh God, we love the spreadsheet meta, don't we? Cloak 71 versus the bitter steel. Total planes lost for 71 cloak was 41. Total planes lost for Bitter Steel was 42. So, Cloak 71 came ahead by a single plane. Just the one. But the real number we want to look at is IC cost. So, the total IC cost for Bitter Steel was 2,751. The total loss for 71 Cloak was 1,722. So, we have our very first winner. Cloak 71, the champion of Bitter Steel. Next up, let's look at another example. The Bo Cohen 1 versus the Tommy K Live. Tommy lost 42 planes and Bo Cohen lost 48. The Tommy K Live came on top with total losses for Bo Cohen of 6,360 and Tommy K 1,596. So we can go through all of these one by one. Oh, that's really interesting. Oh, wow. The Pravis versus the Torio was practically neck and neck. Wow. That was so close. I like the fact that even though it wasn't the exact same result, the numbers were so unbelievably close. Okay, there's a lot of numbers there. Let's summarize. At 11, we have the Dankus. Lost every single dogfight. A complete total of 10 losses. Massive destruction, everything lost. Nothing much to say, really. Let's just review what the Dankus actually was. The Dankus was the plane that had one agility, no defense, and just plowed everything into air attack. You know, I'm going to be real with you. I think prior to the patch, this wasn't a really effective model because air attack was massively OP. And I think they nerfed it slightly to bring it in, in line with the other stats. And that might be the reason why. So it looks like at the moment, air attack stacking does not work anymore. Does not work. Maybe in an AI setting, maybe. Maybe in a situation where the battles are shorter and not two months, maybe only a few weeks, maybe. Remember, there's lots of different scenarios here. We're dealing with like-for-like -like planes. At 10, we have the Bo Cohen 1 winning one fight, which obviously is against Dankus, losing nine other fights. So it seems to me there's like a, a multiplayer meta thing that's formed where the multiplayer guys, where the stacking air attack isn't seem to be as effective as it used to be. I have a feeling that one agility is the kicker here. I think you need some agility to form some kind of air defense. But that little bit extra defense saved Bokon 1 from being the dead last. At number 9, we have the Discord Pixel winning 
three battles and losing seven. This is a bit of a mixed plane because it has a very high priority on armor plates. The heavy fight is probably the big fact here because this is a very expensive plane. To be fair, I suppose all the multiplayer meta guys were going for the heavy fighter and stacking the heavy cost with the lower agility. And I feel like agility seems to be something that people are forgetting about. So it's interesting that this plane succeeded because it kept more of its agility intact and had a good mixture between air attack and air defense. But overall, I think where this, this plane fell short is it has way too many engines, making the cost go up, and also because it's heavy fire, which makes the cost go up as well. Number eight, we have the Ludi, winning five battles and losing five. Well, Ludi, be honest with you, bro, multiplayer meta is not Ludi's thing, but overall, he's managed to accidentally make a decent plane. You know what's actually funny? Is if he didn't have this anti-air here and had actually the proper night penalty module, it actually may have resulted in a completely different result. I would love to see testing to see um, night penalty reductions on fighters to see if it overall brings that fighter into to a more favorable meta position. I'm really curious about that. The only difference with this fight is it's a small airframe, focus on agility, not so much a focus on air attack and a little bit of defense. No bonus to air attack from cannons, maximum agility. Interesting, it sits right in the middle. I would have expected it to be a little bit higher. Maybe it would have been higher if it didn't have the double engine. That would be my prediction. Oh, and it didn't have the best engine too. If he went for a better engine, he could have got more speed. That would have been interesting display of if speed would have been a motivating factor. Ah, oh, that's really interesting. And maybe it would have been bad to go for a single plane too. But remember, in that situation, oh, he could have actually have done that. Yeah, to make this plane better, you would have got rid of that module, single level three engine, and overall you'll get more speed. This probably would have scored in the top three or four otherwise. Ooh, that's really interesting. Sorry, Ludi. I love you, bro. But unfortunately, you are eighth. Number seven, Penguin with five losses and also five wins dead in the middle. Once again, I think where this fight has fallen short here is the stats are great and everything. I just think it's too expensive. I think the IC loss for these planes is just too high. Could have been an improvement on agility, but overall, triple engines, big engines, heavy fire. Unfortunately, just makes the cost way too high. At six, we have the bitter steel. Five losses and also five wins. We have, once again, heavy fighter, double engine. Once again, I think the loss here for this plane is just the cost. Heavy frame and uh, also double engines. Once again, just makes the cost so unbelievably high. And this had to be tweaked and downgraded a little bit. Uh, compared to the previous model because i think the previous model had double cannons on it and unfortunately we couldn't allow that because that would have been overweight at number five we have the 71 cloak probably a massive shock for you guys because 71 cloak the spreadsheet master would have been presumed to be the big boy here seven wins three losses has pulled ahead of a lot of other models and as far as i'm aware on the previous patch this would have been a meta design uh even in situations where it may have lost more planes but become out on top on IC efficiency. Overall, very cost effective as well. There seems to be a pattern here. It seems like the more cost effective models tend to be overall better. And it seems like agility seems to be on its way back. Balancing stats, agility, and also focusing on IC efficiency. Guys, we're in the top four. At number four, we have the Alex the Ramba. A good old Alex try. And my goodness, a fantastic try from Alex. Number four, Alex. Alex, nobody expected to see this result. Alex, the Rambler. The man, the myth, the legend. Big focus on agility. It's a heavy fire. Oh my goodness, I thought this would be a cost-effective model. It's not. So he's gone heavy on the air attack. A little bit lighter on the defense. Defense is here, attack here. Quad engines, insanely expensive and heavy fighters. So there's just a big focus here on speed and I suppose agility, but you lose agility with a heavy fire. This is a result I would have not have expected. This is a big shocker for me. And I'm looking at this and I'm actually confused by it. So he's reduced the weight by going for light machine guns. So less weight means more speed. So this tells me that speed is playing a better part in the overall stats for this plane than any of the others. That is a shocker. So even though he's gone super expensive, because the speed is high, it's actually given him a better result. Wow, I think we have a return of speed, guys. 
Agility looks like it's been slightly buffed. Air attack has been slightly nerfed. And speed is the new big winner. Let's see if there's a pattern here. The bronze medalist, number three, standing on the podium is... Pravis, the mid-max man, the numbers guy. Eight wins and one losses. Pravis. And he's surprisingly gone for an air attack model. This is not what I expected. So it is cost effective. Small airframe, single engine model. Defense, defense, defense. Air attack, air attack, air attack. But overall, there's still a decent amount of agility because it's a small airframe. This is the, the trifecta. This is it. This is a balanced model. The speed isn't the highest we've seen so far. However, the agility is fantastic. The air attack is fantastic. And the defense is not too bad too. There's, there's a sweet spot here that I think we're missing. But overall, it kind of looks like best balance of stats is cost effectiveness and just balance all the other stats that's how it's looking we're about to see the silver medalist standing on the podium it is mr torior torior man the guy who isn't even multiplayer meta he is here with eight wins and one single loss the torior once again a result I did not expect light machine guns. Once again, keeping that speed nice and high. Small airframe, single engine. He didn't even put the best engine on. The, the level three Mark One engine. He didn't even put the best engine on, guys. There's a factor here, because what the engines go up massively in cost. Engine one is 15, 16, 17. Overall, it's not a big increase in price for the more technological engines. However, it might have actually worked out a weird advantage for him by making it a cheaper plane with a weaker engine. Probably not intentional, but overall, that's what he's given us. Small airframe, defense, 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 light on the air attack. The speed is the best you're going to get for small airframe. No, actually, the speed could have been better. He could have gone for more speed if he wanted to. He could go for an extra 62 kilometers per hour if he'd gone for the bigger engine. But overall, the agility is tip top. The air defense is probably the best you're gonna get for a small airframe. So the air, the air defense is max. The air attack is a little bit low compared to others. So overall, it looks like defense, agility, and speed seem to be the contributing factors. Guys, we're about to announce the winner of the YouTuber Plane Battle Royale. Tommy K Live. <laughs> what? Tommy's K's plane won every single battle. <laughs> every single battle. <laughs> I did not expect this result. <laughs> I'll admit, when I DM'd Tommy asking for his plane design, I felt a little bit like he wasn't as engaged with this idea compared to some of the others. Pravis, Torio, 71 Clo, Penguin, uh, Dankus, Bo Cohen. These guys were really engaged with this idea. I feel like I got a lot of back, back and forth with them. Tommy on the hand was kind of like, uh, machine guns, uh, turret, uh, and I, I made the design for him. I showed him, he's like, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Like there was no passion there at all. <laughs> Guys, are ready for it? We're gonna about to see the winner's design. The winner. Remember, cost effectiveness is important here because remember, it's for a two-month period, and it's all based on how many planes you can make. So if the plane is cheap, you can produce more of them. So therefore, you can have more IC cost effectiveness, and that's a factor that we're doing right now. Don't get, forget, there's a lot of variables with this, and I understand this. But just for the simplicity of this test, this is the design that won it. I can't believe it. Single engine, small airframe. So once again, focus on speed, cost effectiveness for a small plane, defense, defense, decent amount of defense. Also a heavy machine gun defensive turret, giving a slight bonus to air attack, but then also a very slight penalty to agility. So a slight more focus on attack. And then he's filled it with heavy machine guns. <laughs> this is not what I would expect <laughs> uh, so the agility is almost maxed 
slight penalty due to the extra heavy machine gun turret. Uh, the air attack is modest. The defense is modest. The speed is maximum. So speed is peak. So speed seems to be a larger contributing factor than we originally remembered. Guys, it does seem to me that making a balanced aircraft with good agility, good speed, seems to dwarf air defense and air attack to a massive degree. And overpricing your aircraft seems to be a mitigating factor. It seems to be affecting the overall impact of the abilities plane to win. Because remember, this plane is very cheap. So when it comes up against a Bo Cohen or a Dankus, more than likely more of these planes will lose. But remember, it's all based on IC effectiveness. So the end result here is Tommy's plane has completely won, not only based on its combat effectiveness, but it's also its IC effectiveness. German genes keep the spirit of the Third Reich deep inside Tommy K. <laughs> That's made him win this. I can't believe that result. Honestly, that could not have gone any more interesting than I thought it was going to be. Oh, so this is also an interesting rule. So Alex's is dead last. So he's winning the battles, but overall the IC getting destroyed is significantly less. So this is an example of where you'll make Alex's design and you'll be like, oh, I'm winning battles, I'm winning battles, I'm winning. But in lateral fight, even though you're winning, you're not shooting a cost-effective amount down by the enemy planes. So it's interesting to see the revert. So with this plane, you could make it Alex's and think you're winning. You're winning because it's saying, oh, red number for the enemy, red number for the enemy, red number for the enemy. But the truth behind it is, even though you're trading well, the overall cost of the plane is inefficient in the long run. That's really interesting to see. All right, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more of this kind of content. Do you want to do another one of these tests? Let me know in the comments below. Something how I could make this test even more fairer. Oh, what about this one here? Here. This one. This one. Next video.